Okay, so this video is all about the Cantex utility box here that I use for a control box. But before I get started on this, I did want to update on my main trolling motor box that uses the Cantex as well. I did make a cooling lid for it. This is the, these are the vents, okay, and it works very very well. This is going to be available for download for those that use the Camtex box here, okay. So I just want to make sure I mention that. So let's get back to this little box. This box is the same thing that I have on my control on my trolling motor box over there, except I kind of made this into its own little, you know, carry carry all box. Okay. So let's open it up. Same lid. There's the PWM. Here's my wiring going out to the trolling motor. This is the wiring going out to the battery. Uh, I'm going to be using this little portable battery for this testing. Okay. Here you'll see some extra leads. Okay. So this is the servo wire coming out of the PWM. And what I did was I took an extension lead and I cut it in half. That way I can tie it into this cable end that goes to my handheld, which I'll mention it right now, it's a five wire. And the reason it's a five wire is two extra wires are set up. If in the future I want to run an on off switch, I can put it on here. Take this on off switch here, take it off and put it here. But for now, don't really need to do that as all I do is turn off the battery and I reset everything like I normally would turning it off here okay so the reason I have this extra wire or extra servo wiring here is so that I can also run the radio control okay all I got to do is add the receiver here and then I could use either or you cannot use these two together it will not work okay the receiver will always override it'll run kind of glitchy and this will never work all right but we'll try so you can see it it's not going to hurt anything just letting you know up front it's not going to work okay so let's go ahead and just operate it the way it is so you can see the handheld here inside here is a servo tester um, after I get done with this presentation, I'll go ahead and open this up so you can see how it's wired and kind of how it uh, put together. All right. So we'll turn on the battery. Everything good. I got my trolling motor already set to five, which is full speed. Okay. So now I'll take my handheld and here we go. Pull forward, pull back. You can graduate it. The only bad thing about the servo tester is that it doesn't have a detent. So I've got it set up where, you know, that little line shows me to the left that that's the neutral. If I go this way, it's reverse. And if I go this way, it's forward. Okay? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. And let's take the receiver from this one. Okay. And for those that don't know how it's hooked up. Okay. The white is always your sense line. Your positive is always in the middle. 
and black as ground and I got it on channel 2 alright so we just remove it from there now on the extra lead on this one you see the colors are a bit different but brown is your ground red is always your positive and the orange is the sense line now I'll have a little figure pop up here kind of show the color codes and how how that works okay but we're gonna go on number two and we'll put it in we're all set now this can go velcroed inside there or velcro to the lid it really doesn't matter okay but for this test we're just gonna leave it out here all right so let's go ahead and turn it on you can see in the receiver that it's connected so now let's connect our remote here now because both are connected okay the trolling motor is already glitching and the receiver is going to override your handheld okay so I can actually operate it still you can see there but you see how it sounds glitchy and if I take my handheld it won't it won't do anything okay so let's go ahead and shut it down and we'll disconnect the handheld okay so all I gotta do is disconnect it we still have our receiver here this is still on so let's go ahead and turn it back on it's connected to the receiver now let's go ahead and operate it no glitching let's go with the cruise okay and that's it so let's go ahead and shut it down I'll shut the remote off I'll disconnect the receiver and now we'll hook up the uh, handheld again and I don't know if you'll be able to see it here in the video there's an arrow here and there is an arrow here somewhere right there there's the arrow so take both arrows together line them up I'll show a better picture of this so you'll see it hook it up there's the old ring for waterproofing take your cap screw it together okay I'm in neutral still there so let's turn on the battery Okay, and that's all there is to it. So let me go ahead and put all this aside and then we'll go ahead and open this up so you can see how 
this goes together. Okay. All right. Let's begin. Of course, I'll take these four screws off. I have to take the wheel off. Keep it there in the center. Pop this off. And there it is. That's your servo controller. You can see here I took a servo lead and I cut one end off so that I can mount it onto the servo tester okay and I just got it on a piece of a rubber cushion I think it's the one that originally came with it just to hold it right there okay and there's my connections here are the five wires there's three connected that I chose okay red with red for power I chose white for your sense line and then the brown with black for your ground. These are the two wires I left if I wanted in the future to run a switch. And that's all there is to it. And of course if somebody wanted to make this I will have this available on Thingiverse for download. Let's see if I can get it all back in there again. Okay, there it is. I wanted to keep all the lights available. Okay, and there's your little reset. Okay. I already know the position of the switch with this knob, so it's going to go on just like that. Okay. All I do is push it in. And that's it. That's all there is to this. I hope this helps somebody out. Kind of get a feel for how this all works. Overall, it's not too bad. I love the Hobbywing ESC. It just simplifies everything. And it's waterproof, so you don't really have to worry too much about the box that you put in to contain it. Which is why I elected to go with the uh, cooling lid. If it gets wet in there, so what? It's not going to hurt it. Same thing with these. If it gets wet, they're so cheap. I bought three in a pack, I believe it was, and I still have the other two, and this one has not failed me yet, so if it got wet and it got ruined, who cares? Just open it back up, swap it out, and continue on. So I hope that helps someone. This was fun, and we'll see you on the next video. See ya.